a boat that's going nowhere, now the symbol of an issue that's just as anchored to UK politics. The Bibby Stockholm barge could eventually hold up to 500 young men seeking asylum at Portland in Dorset. Today, the government vowed to clamp down on, quote, crooked immigration lawyers, offering to submit false asylum claims for a fee. This is about going after that small minority of lawyers who act illegally. In other words, who misuse that professional qualification to provide a veneer of respectability for what is basically criminality. So making up stories, coming up with sham explanations or sham reasons why people should remain in the UK. Help people remain in the country fraudulently, the government says, and you could face life imprisonment. This new task force, though, will receive no new money. Same old problems, say Labour. When the current Home Secretary says that the asylum system is broken, she's right. And there's only one party to blame for that, and it's the Conservative Party. And what we've seen over the last few days, weeks and months is desperate attempts to deflect and to pass responsibility and the buck onto anybody but themselves. The Law Society has said the Home Office is focusing on a tiny minority of lawyers rather than the significant backlogs in asylum claims. Some immigration officers agree. Channel 4 News has spoken to a whistleblower who works as a frontline officer, questioning people within hours of landing on UK soil. This former police officer, whose identity we are protecting, says lawyers providing false stories isn't the issue. People smugglers do it first. Do they already know the questions that they're going to be asked? Yes. How? Because once they've been interviewed, we provide them with the questions and answers. They can then give those questions and answers to people traffickers who will then use those answers and questions for the next generation or the next batch of people seeking to enter the UK. The questions don't change. What are the alarm bells for you? What sends alarm bells is a story is almost identical down to, you know, a couple of words, their reason for claiming asylum. The whistleblower says despite years of policing experience, stage one interviews require him and his colleagues simply to ask the assigned questions and never to probe stories they believe false. Are there enough people doing these interviews and have they got the right experience? They've cut down the number of experienced interviewers and they're replacing them with inexperienced people from a high street recruitment agency. So somebody currently working for Greg's, been unemployed, and next week they're doing the job of interviewing. So the whistleblower says he believes today's announcement is not about policy, but political optics. Pollsters, though, aren't convinced these optics are all that helpful to the government. So a lot of the public want immigration or controls of immigration to be addressed. Uh, that is especially the case with those uh, people who voted Conservative in 2019. However, voters as a whole and Conservative voters are also sceptical of this government's uh, ability to deliver things, including the pledge to stop small boat crossings. So I think the problem you then might have is that by drawing attention to this scheme or the problems surrounding the scheme, you also remind the public that, you know, they don't think you're able to achieve very much and don't seem to be achieving anything despite the noise at the moment. It may not be an easy issue for the government, but it's one they can't escape either. Well, in a statement, the Home Office said... Asylum screening is designed to establish the identity of the claimant and obtain basic information about their reasons for claiming asylum. Assessments on the credibility of asylum claims are made by trained caseworkers later on in the process. Well, as the government works out how to house asylum seekers on land, at sea and abroad, what sort of progress are they making in processing the tens of thousands of applications in the system? Well, our data correspondent Kieran Jenkins has been tracking the Home Office's progress over the last few months and joins me now. Kieran. Jackie, well, that big giant barge might well have been stealing so many of the headlines in recent weeks. A story about housing 500 or so asylum seekers. But that's dwarfed by the huge number of claims in the system, nearly 137,000 waiting for an asylum decision and needing accommodation, of course, while they wait, because by law they can't work to support themselves. And our analysis reveals the government is on track to fail to meet its headline asylum target at the current rate of progress. Here's why. Well, last December, Rishi Sunak promised that by the end of this year, he'd 
clear the asylum back backlog. Now, Downing Street later backtracked and said he was only talking about a legacy backlog of asylum cases, those in the system before 28th of June last year. So how is he doing? Well, here's where it was at the end of June last year, just over 100,000 cases in the legacy backlog. And look, some steady progress down to just under 88,000 by January 2023. Then last month was the best month-on-month -month change since we started to count the legacy backlog. The government managed to clear uh, then around 8,500 claims, more than double the previous month. So are they on track then to clear the legacy backlog this year as promised? Well, processing could end up being quicker or slower, but at the far end here is a projection based on that best rate the Home Office has managed. And it shows that by the end of the year, even at that best rate, there would still be not zero, but 20,000 claims in the legacy backlog. Now, the government insists that it is on track to clear it, that productivity is improving, and that it has more staff in post to process claims. So let's take that projection away. And remember, we've been talking here about the legacy backlog of cases before the end of June last year, the orange bars here. But of course, asylum cases didn't stop then. These grey bars you're going to see show the second backlog of claims made after that cutoff date has been growing. And you put these two backlogs together and you get the total backlog. So what's happened to that? Well, when Rishi Sunak promised to clear the legacy backlog back in December 2022, uh, the total in the two backlogs was 136,230. And since then, the total backlog has actually increased by 500 claims, getting nearer uh, to 137,000. So can the government clear the legacy asylum backlog? Well, on this performance, it's not looking likely. And the second backlog, uh, Jackie, is set to keep caseworkers busy for her months to come, and ministers too. Thanks, Karen. Well, the government's decision to focus on a unit intended to crack down on corrupt immigration lawyers has not been well received by some in the legal profession. Joining me now is Lubna Shuja, the president of the Law Society, the body which represents solicitors. Um, Lubna Shuja, um, three immigration law firms were closed down just last week. If there are three firms fraudulently helping migrants gain asylum, presumably we can assume there are others. Uh, I don't think we can assume that at all, actually. This is a small minority of solicitors who've been involved in these cases. There are over 220,000 solicitors across England and Wales, and the majority of those act honestly, they act within the legal framework, and they advise their clients according to the legislation that is in place at the moment. I mean, we heard in the piece there from an assessor who says absolutely migrants do tell stories. He talked about the almost identical stories that are given. Is part of the problem that lawyers, simply because they act for those individuals, have to take what they say as face value? I think, you know, we have to be careful here that we're not conflating uh, bad lawyers with clients who might be behaving badly. You know, lawyers advise within the legislation and, you know, they will accept whatever story a client tells them uh, because that's their role. They are there to advise on a client's personal circumstances. I mean, do you anticipate with this new task force? I mean, after all, it has been illegal, as I understand it, for a very, very long time for lawyers to illegally assist someone to, to lie about um, their asylum claim. This new unit, this task force, do you expect to see more lawyers in trouble? No, I think one thing we need to be clear about, and I think it's been mentioned earlier on uh, during the item today, this is not a new task force. This task force has been around for four months already and it involves a number of organisations and government bodies who have been looking at immigration more generally and looking at a number of professionals, not just lawyers. They've also been considering the role of medical practitioners who provide evidence to support asylum claims. And, you know, the thinking behind the task force is that we, you know, they are sharing intelligence with each other. Um, I mean, the key thing is, 
This is distracting from what's actually going on at the moment. We've already heard, and in fact, the, the most recent figures were 100, almost 137,000 outstanding cases uh, for you know, asylum seeker cases. It's taking over a year to process those cases. That's where the problem is, the backlog. And that's what the government needs to be focusing on and tackling. And from your perspective, how do they do that? What would change? What would speed up processing that backlog? Well, I mean, one of the first things, we heard some, uh, uh, you know, the, the anonymous immigration officers speaking. We know from anecdotal... Well, we know from evidence, actually, that where the Home Office refuses to grant asylum and those cases are appealed, almost half of those appeals are successful. So that indicates that there is a level of poor decision-making taking place at the Home Office, and that needs to be tackled. I mean, this is not the first time that there has been a specific, how shall I say, focus, some might call it, attack on lawyers. You've been called lefty lawyers by the Prime Minister, um, activist lawyers by the Home Secretary. Does any of this matter long term, or is it just a bit of mudslinging as part of a political debate? You know, this loose language that's being used by, um, you know, ministers, senior government ministers, is very, very dangerous. You know, we have got so many lawyers who are acting honestly, they're acting with integrity, they're representing vulnerable people, and using language like that is undermining the reputation of our profession, it's undermining the rule of law, and it's undermining the need for access to justice for everybody, no matter what their background and no matter uh, what their means. Lubna Shuja, the president of the Law Society, thanks very much for talking to us. Now in London. Thank you, Jackie. So how does the asylum debate play out electorally? Not to mention the rise over low traffic neighbourhoods and North Sea drilling. Back to our senior political correspondent, Paul McNamara, who's had an exclusive look at a new poll. Paul, you've been a busy man. What does it say? <laughs> Well, it says that the Conservatives at the moment are facing a bit of a catastrophe. So this is polling given exclusively to Channel 4 News by pollsters at Find Out Now and Electoral Calculus. And it was conducted between the 31st of July and the 4th of August last Friday. So it takes into consideration all the noise and publicity about ULES and North Sea drilling and all things, by the way, that the Conservatives, there was a feeling that they were hoping to capitalise on looking at these numbers, they will not be happy. So 11,000 people were polled. What they said, if there was an election right now, 24% of voters would back the Conservatives. 46% would back Labour. Conservatives would see their vote share down by 21%, Labour up 13%. The big question, of course, then, what does that mean for the shape of Parliament? Well, that means the Conservatives will be down to fewer than 100 seats, just 90. Labour would have a landslide, a majority, 461 seats. You'd also see a resurgence of the Lib Dems, them fighting with the SNP for second place. You'd also see a few big names lose their seats, notably even the Prime Minister and a few members of his cabinet. Now, look, all the usual caveats apply. It's a poll. Things change. You know, there's still possibly a year until the election. However, whichever way you look at these numbers, they are bad for the government. Not mincing your words there, Paul. Thank you very much indeed.